Hi there, this is uh, Rob from uh, Bad Book, and I'm in the back room of the, of the uh, Chris Patton Bowers match of uh, the Crimson Moon. No longer the Crimson Moon. Mm -hmm. um, that, in, that name is, is linked with Ian and obviously with ourselves, uh, myself and Samantha Baker, for the last four years. Yeah. Um, Sam and I have taken the lead more towards the mead and wine side. Yeah. For the last four years, we've been building up our mead and wine varieties. We're now hitting 30 different types of mead. That's a lot. It is, it is. And one of the things we pride ourselves on is supporting uh, British brewers, yeah. British meaderies. Um, so we've now taken a step of having a bricks and mortar yep. shop up in Northeast um, mm -hmm. called Duntabin. Yeah. Um, we're on Facebook and online with that one. But the effort that takes means that we'd effectively be trying to sustain two major things between the bar here and that. Yeah. So we've taken the logical step back from there. Ian and Susie have taken back the name Crimson Moon because yeah. they, they will be moving to a small holding soon. And they will be setting up a Ian will be setting up a proper meat hall for mm -hmm. Crimson Moon so there'll be a, a home there for it. Yeah. Um, and I'm down helping CP this year set up and run their bar, which is called the bar with no name. Mm. <laughs> which is exactly where we're at now, the bar that has no name but is uh, still being quite popular with, with the locals. <laughs> it is, it is. Everyone's still coming through. Um, prices are good. Prices are actually down. We're down to a, a healthy amount of, um, mm. uh, well, all the old selections that people know. Yeah. Um, the prices are down pretty much down to where they were about 10 years ago, yeah. almost, which is great. No, that's fantastic. It is. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, so, that, and more, so the bar now is being run by CP, and uh, as Matt said, um, so you're now setting up the, you've now got the, the I cannot talk, my apologies, everyone. The Matt's now got the Bips and Mops up there, yeah? We do indeed. It's Dun Tavin. We're on Facebook. It's D U N T A B B I N. It's a bit of a, but a bit of an in-joke. Um, mm -hmm. Some people will know that I spent 10 years in the army yeah. and one of the things to do is tab. Mm -hmm. So after 10 years in, I came out and I was done tabbing. That's it. And uh, to that shop, it's there's an awesome amount of meads in there. It does. It's got all the meads and wines that you've known that we've built up over the last four years. Um, as I say, we, we have a massive support from British suppliers. We've got links into Lindisfarne on Holy Island. Um, across to the west in Lancashire with the Lancashire Mead Company mm -hmm. um, and down to the south of Lyme Bay and right. Mondiac from Scotland as well and we're actually looking to expand this year oh, yeah. hopefully adding three or four more we look forward to finding out more about those so if you want to find them it's a bit of more shop in Durham you mentioned Facebook any other, any other way to get hold of you? there is our website yeah. um, which is www.duntabin.com mm -hmm. um, which is, it's all up and running. We can do, because we're based in the Northeast um, and we live about 15 miles away, it's actually in Gilesgate in Durham. Um, either we, I can do local deliveries myself yep. to Newcastle, Sunderland and the Durham postcodes. Fantastic. And we can get, we hope and we trust that APC will be able to deliver within 48 hours um, to anywhere in the UK. Okay, so instead of the Crimson Moon going away, this actually sounds like a really bright future. The Crimson Moon gets a permanent home, then Tavern expands its range of meat discovering, and Crimson Moon is doing a nice job running the bar. Yeah. Last thing, we always wanted to support the players, we always love to support Curious Pastimes, and giving CP that, that knowledge base and that experience behind the bar staff and the organisation of it means that CP will have a good bar and a good organisation for moving forward for running themselves. Yeah. And there are already a couple of personalities creeping from <laughs> creeping from the world into the bar. Yeah. Um, we've had a couple of house magister behind the bar already, putting um, concern, mild concern, <laughs> into some of the player base, which I think is perfect. No, that's beautiful, and I hope to be, to be seeing more of those creeping in. Actually, so it really does make me get lively. Bar. It does. It does. It, it adds to the ambiance. It adds to the intrigue as well. Yeah. Um, there's always been a, a history behind the Crimson Moon. Yeah. Um, the in game was always supported by the Treaty of the Fae, yeah. uh, which made it a nice neutral location, but we didn't see the Fae very often. Yeah. Now they're behind the bar, so it's a little <laughs> bit more, more, more of an intimate environment, and I, yeah. I get the feeling that some of the, the, the more ruder ogres that we might have had passing through <laughs> might be a little more subdued. <laughs> 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 I've just said food, food, the whole thing. We've had some of these interviews of our CPs sort of evolving the world and the story, mm. and now it's gone into the bar. Yeah. I mean, we've always had um, little bits and pieces of intrigue. Yeah. Um, we're hosted um, 
or rather the, the war hosts for CP um, for this event are hosted in Teutonia. Yeah. Um, formerly, um, there was, I think it was last year, there was an event where they were on the lands between Teutonia and somewhere else. Yeah. I think it was in the Badlands. Um, so we had a number of vampires and sentient undead uh, trying to seek plays out to try to pay passage. Um, and of course, there are certain war hosts out there that have a, a near rabid hatred for undead. Yeah. So there were some bits and pieces of intrigue, coin purses, upping and levitating and fleeing outside the tavern, outside of the neutral area, um, where suddenly the, those, those vampires were vulnerable again um, and were taken out sadly. That's how it happens. Like, it it is. Said, this is a kind of a, is a game world where anything can actually happen. Yeah, it's it's been massively player driven uh, plot wise. Um, in the last couple of years, they've improved the active battlefield scouting. Yeah, they have improved um, in, in the terms of intelligent monsters. Um, so, for example, six or seven years ago, for a lot of the major LARPs, yeah. and you'll know yourself. Yeah, monsters were statted on the fly. Yeah, and it was wave after wave. It was. It was Wave after wave of monster, no background of anything, just some numbers, go for it. Yeah, whereas these days there is a healthy brief before the players, uh, before the monster inside, engage on the battlefield, um, and they're, well, when we were fighting with the Mempo Empire, they were hired in mercenaries. Yeah. So everyone had 15, 20 minutes, half an hour to come up with a background for your mercenary, and then develop your skill set along the lines of that. So a little bit of freedom for monsters to self stat yeah. Um, and to come up with the reason why they're fighting and then actively engage the players in conversation as well. Yeah, that's actually so much better. It just drives so much more intrigue, plot, fun. Yes. Um, yeah. it, it adds to the ambiance, it adds to places where you've got that, that natural lull between shield walls. You gain a lot more goading yeah. um, and a lot more embodied one because you're, you're <laughs> You, you and your friends, you, you've had 20 minutes to come up with a concept for a character that you don't mind if it falls over and dies, but then again, you know, you get a little bit attached to yeah, during yeah, that, yeah. that yeah. high emotional two or three hours worth of fighting. You get yeah. attached to it and you want to survive. Yeah, that actually means you're not actually... Don't, you, sometimes when you're monstering, you kind of go off, this is just a static monster, I'm just going, if I get hit a few times, yeah, I, maybe I should die now, but, but now you actually care about it. You don't want, you're the monster who doesn't want to die. Yeah, um, you're there to give good play uh, players good game, yeah. um, and you then start fighting intelligently. Mm. You start fighting like a player as opposed to the, the, the faceless hordes. Yeah, which is great. Which is so much better. So we've just kind of full circle now from back, yeah. from bar back in the game, and uh, and here we are, still still on the bar. Yeah. So uh, I just want to say that thanks. That's been a really good, insightful chat. So thank you very much, Matt. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you.